Hi, what's up people? I'm going to release a series of videos where I'm going to explain about MVVM and also some of the Jetpack components. So to explain those concepts, I have created a very simple e-commerce application with some features like a product list and um, yeah, also some product details. You can add a product to the shopping cart. You can add a product to the wish list, um, removing and so forth. Um, so I also I'm, I'm also using the idea of clean architecture here. So I have three layers: the presentation, the domain, and the data layer. So you might as well learn a thing or two about uh, clean architecture. The first thing I want to say is that um, there are different ways of implementing MVVM and also clean architecture. So this is just one way of doing things. Doesn't mean that uh, if you're doing it in a different way, then it's, it's wrong. That's that's not what I mean. So without further ado, let's start. So in this video, we're going to talk about the fragment and the view module. So let's start with the, the simplest part, which is uh, the fragment. So uh, this fragment that we're going to talk about is called product list fragment, which is basically this fragment that you're seeing uh, right here in the, in the emulator. So it's a list of products um, where you can see um, yeah, the title of the product, the description, an image, and if the product is in the wish list and if it's in the shopping cart. So very simple, nothing, uh, nothing fancy going on here. So let's see how you can implement this. Um, well, the first thing that I want to explain about the fragment is that, is that I use the concepts of view states. So um, I want to show you the view state that, uh, that we're using here, because if you don't use the, the ideas of view state, it might be a little bit different in the beginning, but once you get, uh, you get how it works, it's actually quite easy. So for example, for this screen, we have basically three states, right? We have the loading state. Then we have, because we're fetching data from an API, so this product list is coming from an API, so we have to show a loading state. And then we have an error state, in case this API fails, right? And finally, and the most important one, we have the content state, which is the one that you're seeing right now. So a list of products. This is what I call content state. And as you can see in the, here in the right, uh, this is the definition of the view state. The, so the, the loading, the error, and the content. And in the content state, I, has, I have a list of products. So this list that you're seeing here, I also have one view state for each of those products. So I'm using this idea of view states to represent the screen. So that's the first thing that I want to share about the fragment. Then, um, then we have the live data. So the way that I update the UI is by using live data. So whenever this view is created, so whenever this fragment is created, uh, I call this, this method in the view model that is called load product list. So in this method, load product list, I'm going to actually fetch data from, uh, from, from an API. And whenever that data is available, I'm going to listen the changes uh, using a live data. So here you have the view model dot view state and this view state is a live data. So that's that's one observable. And what I'm doing here is that whenever there is a new state, whenever this live data changes, I call this method that is called update UI and I pass what is the current or what is the most recent view state. And in this method is very simple. It just update the UI based on the view state that I have. For example, I show that I have the three view states. So for the loading state, what I do, I just show the, the loading. For the error, I hide the loading, I hide the product list, and I show an error. And for the content, I hide the loading, I hide the, the, the error state, and I show a product list. So the fragment is pretty much it. It's very simple as it should be. Ideally, you want to keep your fragment as simple as possible because then you can write tests for your view mode. You can write unit tests to test the, the logic. And also, if you keep it simple, it's easier to write uh, a UI test for it as well. So as you can see, it's a very simple fragment, not much going on. Most of the things that are being done are actually in the view model and in the other layers as well. 
So let's take a look in the view module now. So the first thing I want to um, I want to share about the view model is that you should be using dependency injection. So if you don't, I really recommend that you do it. In the beginning, is a little bit of uh, you you have some effort to set it up because you have to add dependencies and you have to define your graph. You maybe if you don't know it, you have to read a little bit about the documentation. But it's really useful, especially for testing. And also, uh, whenever your project start getting bigger and bigger, it's going to be much easier to maintain it. So here for this, this view model, I have some dependencies. So the first dependency that I have is called the product repository. That's, um, that's the interface that is going to define how I'm going to fetch data from an API. Uh, actually how I'm going to receive the, the data. It doesn't mean it, it's from an API. It could be from a database, for example. It could be from shared preference file. It doesn't really matter. It's just a definition. This is an interface. As you can see, get product list. It doesn't matter where this data is coming from. I know that it's a product list. And then I have a use case that is called uh, is product in the wish list. Well, the name is very uh, descriptive. And then I have another use case that is for adding and removing a product to the wish list. Cart repository, the same to know if a product is in the cart, a price for matter, and the dispatcher. The dispatcher is very useful whenever you're writing unit tests for the view model because then you can use um, a dispatcher for, for your tests. Uh, I think that the most important thing here in the in the view model is the live data. So as I mentioned, your fragment is observing your live data and it's updating the UI also based on this live data. So there is this trick that we, we do here with the live data because you want to be able to change the live data. Of course, when you first you have to show a loading state. Uh, whenever you're doing the API call and then you have to show the content so you have to be able to change that live data so that's why you need the mutable live data but on the other hand you don't want your fragment to be able to mutate your live data so that's why we have this trick here it's also uh, defined in one of the documentations from Google you can check it out but that's basically just to avoid the fragment changing your live data so here we have the definition of the live data and the most important method from the view model is that one that we talked about. So load product list. That's where you're actually going to fetch the, the products from the repository. So I'm launching a coroutine because I know that I'm getting products from an API and I have to do it. I'm going to use a coroutine because I can't block the, the main thread. And I know that the repository is going to use a, a IO thread for that. Um, so the first thing that I do is that I show a loading state. So I change the, I post a value in the, in the live data showing a loading. And then my repository is going to uh, call this method, get product list. I'm going to receive a list of products. And I also check what are the products that are in my shopping cart, because if they are in the shopping cart, then I have to change the icon here. And once I, I got the list of products, I create the the contents the content view state and create a product view state for a product card view state for each product that I have so very simple not not um, not very complicated I also have a price for matter to format the price also checking this if the product is in the wish list because is if it's in the wish list then I also have changed the icon and the same for the card um, as you can see it's um, it's also I think it's very simple. You, it's not a lot of no, it's not a lot of logic going on here. And um, most of the Android related APIs they are in the fragment. So in the view mode, it's more like presentation logic. And if if you if you do it in that way, then it's going to be quite easy to write unit tests for your view model because then you can easily use a test dispatcher here and then in the setup method you can pass that test dispatcher and you'll be able to write unit tests for your view model. 
So I think I covered the most important uh, points about the view model and the fragment when it comes to MVVM. I think that the, the most important thing here is the communication between the fragment and the view model by using the live data. So the view model is going to fetch data and it's going to update the live data and the fragment is going to observe that live data. And whenever there is a change in the live data, the fragment is going to update itself. That's the most important concept, the key concept between the communication um, of fragment and the view model. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the, the domain part or the business part and a little bit about those repositories and those use cases. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit uh, the like button because that helps a lot and also subscribe to check out the, the new videos. That's it. See you in the next video.